Gracie is a lucky dog, but then that's often said about those who make it big. Time and chance do play a role in this friendly dog's life. But the real twist to Gracie's tale is that in the crass world of showbiz, it's her charming personality that led to her fame. Four-year-old Gracie is the Canadian mascot for the Greyhound bus line. Good girl. Stay. Ready? Gracie's owner, Tammy Deakins, is also her agent. The fact that she's going to be the dog for Canada now is really exciting. Yay! Yay! It'll be neat that people all across the, from coast to coast, will be able to see her and see what she does. You would never guess that as a puppy, Gracie's life was one of neglect, abuse, and near death. Gracie's first owner, abandoned six-month-old Gracie at the Calgary Humane Society. And the owner gave them permission to put Gracie to sleep, the fate of most dogs here. Gracie's chances of survival looked slim as she was placed in kennel number 13. But in the first of a series of flukes, Gracie's life was about Tammy to change. Tammy Blossom Pound, please. Tammy Blossom Pound. Because Tammy Deacons worked at that very pound, and Tammy loved greyhounds. The staff in the lost and found department paged me to come back because they had a surprise. Well, when I first saw Gracie, she was scared and she was nervous. She was looking a little bit frantic standing at the door. I have quite a passion for greyhounds, and so we just instantly connected with one another. Come on, let's go. There was no second thoughts that she was going to be coming home with me. Come here. What's her name? Gracie. Gracie. Hi. Want a cookie? Gracie had been given her name by her previous owner. And when Tammy first saw Gracie in her element, she decided to keep her name. Come on, Gracie! Greyhounds are the fastest dogs on Earth. But when at home, they love to sleep. And Gracie is a typical greyhound. Despite Gracie's history of neglect, she immediately fit in with her new family, including Maurice, all 40 pounds of him. Gracie's career began innocently enough, working with Tammy in the Humane Society Outreach Program. The main reason that we take her along to the schools is so that the kids have some hands-on. It makes the lecture a little bit more memorable and promoting proper care. If you start it with children, then you don't have adults that don't know how to take care of their animals. Okay, so maybe we'll try some questions on this side, yes. Has Gracie been in any races with other dogs? No, she hasn't. And then, after a year and a half together, another flute. Calgary Humane Society, Tammy speaking. Tammy answered the Humane Society phone. How are you doing? It was the call that could change okay. a life. Well, it was pretty fluky, actually. One of the production companies that was scouting out a dog for Greyhound phoned the Calgary Humane Society to see if we knew of anybody that had Greyhounds or if there was a Greyhound club in town, and they got me on the phone. Yeah, I told them that, in fact, I had a Greyhound, and they agreed to come over and have a look at her. You bet. Hi there. Hi. The day after Tammy's phone call, a couple of television producers showed up at Tammy's home. Hi they were looking for a very specific greyhound to use in a television commercial. And at first, Gracie was not what they were looking for. She wasn't at all the look that we set out looking for. 
Uh, little did we know that actually finding the perfect greyhound was going to be uh, such a challenge. Hey, Gracie, sit. Good girl. We've had a very difficult time um, finding a greyhound. So despite her being gray, she seems to be the best behaved dog. But her attention and concentration is quite remarkable com yeah. compared to the other dogs that we've seen. So I think it's worth running her by greyhound, see yeah. if they'll go for it. Gracie was off to her first audition. Gracie had no experience as a dog actor. Tammy had no experience as a stage mom. In the beginning, it was kind of stressful because I didn't know what everybody expected. And she doesn't know a lot of tricks. Let's go. And then Tammy saw the competition okay. and knew that Gracie's chances were slim. This fawn, regal greyhound has the perfect look. It's the type of mascot greyhound is always used in their commercials. And in the superficial world of television, looks mean everything. Well, almost everything. Finding a greyhound that was fawn, that was well-trained, that was energetic, that liked to run around, that had the right uh, dynamic personality, that was pretty tough. <laughs> It's like you can't control it. Nobody thought finding the right dog for the job would be so difficult. Gracie solves the problem. Mostly because of how well trained she is. She will do anything for food and that's a real bonus. Dogs are super easy to train if they're, if you can figure out what they're motivated by. Some dogs are motivated by toys and some by touch and this one happens to be motivated by food, which works out really good for us. Using food to control Gracie's eyeline makes her a natural for the camera. The production team is impressed. What we liked about Gracie when we saw her is she was completely the wrong look, but she had such a great personality. She was so energetic, and I think it was the relationship, relationship yeah, with, between with. Tammy and Gracie and how cooperative she yeah. was and how they respected each other so much. Girl. And we said, we're going to make this look work. We're going to take her to Greyhound, uh, despite the fact she's this dark, dark gray color. Um, it's sheer personality that was going to, to come through. But would Gracie's personality win over the pocketbooks of Greyhound bus line? If they choose Gracie, that means changing their entire advertising campaign. And that's a very expensive decision. The radical change to go from an icon to a dog that had a distinct look that was nothing like anything we had ever advertised before made us have to change not only our TV, but our interior transit, our posters and terminal. And from a corporate perspective, that was a huge leap of faith. Big drop of drool. Gracie got the job. It paid off to trust in Gracie's personality. The ad campaign is a complete success. Not only did Gracie turn out to be a talented actor, she's also a matchmaker. Working at the Humane Society is how I met my husband. Dr. Deacons. At the time, he was Dr. Deacons, and of course now he's Dirk. Hey, Gracie, let's have a look. Tammy and Dirk had been work colleagues. Oh, boy, yeah, Gracie you cemented are. the bond. Pretty long legs there. When I saw Gracie, I was always quite impressed how well behaved Gracie was and how well she listened to Tammy and what a good combination it was, what a strong bond she had with, with her owner, with Tammy. That's where the romance really blossomed. Oh, man. Oh, big yell. That's just a dog stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Gracie's star status is now guaranteed. A brand new Greyhound campaign is on the way, and Gracie's still the down-to-earth, lovable pet saved by Tammy. There's no replacing a dog, and there won't be anybody ever as special as Gracie is. She's so happy all the time. And it's a nice reminder every day that you should look at the world that way. She's just delighted for little things like getting a treat or going for a walk, having a soft bed to sleep in. And those are the things to be thankful for.
rugged Alaska-British Columbia border, Tiger, a great Pyrenees, is hard at work. He and a pack of five other guardian dogs have 1,500 sheep and three shepherds to protect. Jolene Shepherd has the perfect name for her job, but she was raised in Vancouver, not exactly an isolated wilderness area. Tiger and Jolene's summer jobs are a result of lumber companies clear cutting. Absolutely every tree in a large section of forest is cut down. The companies must then replant but the tiny new trees are soon smothered by faster growing vegetation like fireweed. It sucks up sun and rain, leaving a clear cut full of small dead trees. Chemical spraying is one solution. Renting a herd of sheep is another. But put in sheep and out come the predators. Wolves prowl the forests Fearless grizzlies are in the bush and on the lumber roads. It's been a tough summer for the bears. Not enough berries due to bad weather. And now 1,500 sheep are eating everything but the newly planted trees. These sheep would make a good meal for a hungry bear. I'm really afraid of bears and cougars and wolves or anything that can eat me. And. Uh, I don't actually even know why I ever came up for this job, but I really like it now. They may be guardians, but these dogs still work on the hierarchy of the pack. It's not always gentle nuzzles when these six dogs are together. There had been seven dogs until last week. That's when Cuddles was attacked by wolves. Dragged himself back to the flock and tiger. And this big guy instantly took off and walked over there to check out the dog that was hurt. And I was really worried because of the top doggy thing. I thought maybe then he was attack him or growl at him. And when he got over there, it was the coolest thing. He, in this most nurturing way, looked at the poor beaten up doggy and he sniffed him all over like he was checking out where poor Cuddles' wounds were. And he looked at the tree line and he just put on the most impressive show of growling and barking. During the night, Cuddles died, with Tiger watching over him. He had been there the whole time watching him. Just, just incredible. Tiger's the oldest boss dog. He's probably the noblest, toughest, most favorite dog of everybody out here. Um, he's been around for a really long time. And as you can see, he's got all sorts of war wounds on him. This dog last year, he decided it was a good idea to take on a grizzly bear by himself. And uh, this little doggy was able to pulled back a thousand pound grizzly bear on his own, which is pretty ferocious, right? I mean, you wouldn't want to mess with a dog that can hold back a thousand pound grizzly bear, but he's just the most lovable dog in the world. Like, all he wants is pets. As a puppy, Tiger was put in with the sheep on a farm. He came out thinking he was a sheep. thousands of years to enhance the guardian in him, and what's a dog like Tiger to do? As a great Pyrenees, it was his destiny to guard sheep. But Tiger is starting to show signs of being too old for his job. The terrain's difficult, the weather changeable, the bugs bad, and on top of that, no one but the sheep get much rest. We work on sheep time and we do what sheep want to do, not what we want to do. And unfortunately, sheep like getting up at five o'clock in the morning. The dogs work all night, so by morning, they're happy to let the shepherds watch for a while. They'll sort of follow the sheep around. They're pretty lethargic. They just sort of lie there, chill out, try and get some sleep. 
I sometimes think those guardian dogs think they're sheep. Like, they just want to be with the sheep. They truly, truly love the sheep. One thing you have to watch out for when you're feeding these dogs is that as much as they love their sheep, they like their food better. Top dog gets to eat more food, and therefore they'll walk around and inspect the different piles and decide which one looks the best, and then they'll sit down and claim it. The flock often moves to new pastures, and everyone has to follow. This guy, Tiger. I guess this coat looks pretty ratty and dirty, and they're not very well groomed dogs. They're not a bunch of poodles running around out here chasing bears. But uh, these coats are actually fairly important to these dogs. They're active in armor. They uh, protect the dogs against bug bites and against dog bites or any sort of bites from predators. <laughs> Unfortunately, the thick coats don't totally protect the dogs from encounters with porcupines. And some dogs like Draco never learn. There came a day when the isolation finally got to Jolene. She just wanted to go home. She sat there in misery. The clouds, cold and drizzle, didn't help. And then along came her guardian. He came up, and then he laid his body right down where my backpack was, almost to say that I could lie down on his stomach and catch a nap, because he was warm and dry and being cuddly and nurturing. Today, life on the clear cut seems pretty calm. Long nights and warm days have exhausted every last muscle in Tiger's beaten up body. But his nose still works. The dense bush is good cover for a bear. Tiger sounds the alert. The dogs, including Tiger, have stood their ground. But you can see the, the guardian dogs here. They know that there's a bear right there, and they're actually forming a wall on the back side of the sheep there, on the same side that the bear is, to keep them on that side away from the bear, and in case the bear wants to come in and attack on that side, because they know it's there, they can smell it. Our shepherds have no idea where this bear is going to come from, just randomly charging out of this tree line or that tree line. Good morning. This bear is not stupid. He's not coming down until the dogs, the sheep, and the shepherds are long gone. The year before, Jolene only lost three sheep, and they were claimed by old age or poisonous plants. Once again, Tiger has earned his keep. He's chased a lot of bears for us. And He's on the retirement plan. Tiger still has all the best qualities of any guardian dog who ever loved his sheep and his shepherd too. Klondike is an old English sheepdog, a breed also known as a bobtail. He's three years old, and he's never even seen a sheep. Okay. Notice how clean and well-groomed he is. Klondike is obviously loved, and that's why he's come all the way from Miami to be here on a farm in Virginia, where his owners have rented a few sheep for him. This city slicker is about to take his first lesson in herding, something that is supposed to be in his genes. Uh, sometimes dogs will come right out and not even pay any attention. They have no idea what the sheep are. They don't know what to do with it because they've never seen them. Come on, get your sheep. Come on, buddy. Come on, Doug. Come on. Come on. Now you can see he's, he sees the sheep. He's just not sure 
Now this is where Puck comes in again. Come on. Mark resorts to Puck, the farm border collie, to show Klondike how to get going. We sometimes will just follow Puck around. Now Puck, away. Uh -uh. As you can see, he's now, Klondike's now going, well, I'm not quite sure what this is all about, but I'd like to be involved in it. Here we go. There we go. Klondike, come. Klondike. Okay, there we go. Whoa, a little too sharp on the turns there. You're seeing the transition from a dog that had no idea of what was going on to a dog whose herding instinct suddenly came up from somewhere deep down inside. Now, of course, being the first time, they're going to be very, very uh, excited and not wanting to stop. The off switch on Klondike isn't as easy to find as the on switch. Well, unfortunately, these people are going to now have to buy sheep because all he's going to be thinking about is sheep from now on. <laughs>